What's going on guys, Sakapoko here, bringing you another 7 Deadly Sins Grand Cross video. Let's we'll be going over the top 20 questions that new players ask when playing 7 Deadly Sins Grand Cross. We're going over all the new questions people ask, all the old questions people ask, and just all the, the fun things in between with lots of memes. So guys, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Okay, so the first question that I always get for a new user on the stream, no matter what, if they're just starting the game and everything is, hey, who should I reroll for? The answer is so simple. No one. This is a game where you just pick up and go. If you really want to reroll right now, the best rerolls are Arthur and Red Hauser. If you had a count with both of them, that's your like, <gasps> yay, big pee pee. But you're still going to need other characters. And the really funny thing is that Arthur and Red Hauser are available free to play anyways because you can get them with gold coins. So you do not need to start with them. You can just get them later. So don't worry. Rerolling is not recommended. Just start the game, play the game, go. Second question I guess. Seka, what's the best farming team? Right over there. It's awesome. It's super good. It's, I mean, it's awesome. It's Big PP. So the best farming team you're going to use for all content is going to be char are characters that you can use with area effect attacks. You really don't want to use too many characters with buffs and other things like that. You very much need to focus on characters that have just attack skills. That's why Hauser is one of the best farming units in the game. We got SR Elizabeth, who is also an amazing character for farming. She's going to do more damage than Hauser more often. And she's going to be an amazing character for your kit because, you know, everyone starts with her and she's a free unit right away. So you can start with her from moment one for every single account out there. There's nothing else you need to worry about because you get her right away. Uh, another character to work on is probably, this is an asterisk, there are other options, but uh, the best option currently, which is really unfortunate, is Weinhardt. Uh, SR Weinhardt is a very good farming unit. Is he good later? Fuck no, he's terrible later. But right now for like the first month, sure, yeah, that's good. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty good. Um, he's out way before Coin Bond's going to be out. He's going to be he's out right now for everybody who are able to pull him. You could potentially even use rare coins on him. Sure. Uh, the only other replacement for any of these units that is in the game currently is going to be SSR Green Fat King. And to be honest, he, when we did damage testing between Weinhardt and Green Fat King, the damage was really similar between the two. Um, Green Fat King, and we did this on the Japanese version and the global, ver uh, not the global version, but the Japanese version at level 60 with 6 star, and we put on max gear and everything, and they they have about the same amount of scaling. They they do about the same amount of damage. There's not a ton of difference between the two. Um, Weinhardt does more damage per hit. Um, King has bigger lows and bigger highs. So they're on average, they're about the same. But Weiner has a passive that actually boosts Hauser and Lizhawk. So that's why it's kind of a recommended right now. Hey, Seka, what gear do you have on this character? Can you show me your gear on this character? Can Is it a good thing to have this on this character? Well, um, the gear I have on every single character in the game currently besides King, which I'm like half working on, not really, uh, is going to be SSR, SSR gear on the left hand side. It's going to be upgraded right now to all my characters the three star because I really don't want to spend the gold going higher than that right now. Um, SSR gear on the left hand side and common gear on the right hand side. The common gear I have rolled right now for my area effect team on pierce and attack subsets and that's so I can actually get more damage out of it. Uh, if you want more combat class you're going to go with an attack roll and if you want more damage you're going to go with a pierce roll. Pierce roll is only good for characters that have the pierce ability like this SR as you saw just now, using inflicting the ability Pierce. That allows her to get three times Pierce on all, all her hits, giving her a big bump in damage. Uh, Wine hurts on the team because he gives a Pierce bonus every turn that passes. So just to let you know, that's why Pierce is slightly better than attack, but not it's not so good that you really should just try to max min them uh, on common gear. For common gear for your farming team, just go with the first high roll you get. We're talking above two, two and a half percent. First high roll and then just move on. And then you can move on to other characters and build out those characters. Don't worry about trying to max min gear right away on your farming team. Worry about your actual PvP team, other teams that you want to build out, raid teams, etc. Those are way more important to max min versus the farming team. Farming team really will only improve slightly as time goes on. 
unless you get more levels and you're gonna get more up to six star on the characters. And you also need to get five star on the left hand side, starting your weapons, and that's really gonna see the tangible gains and speed. But till then, you're probably not gonna see huge tangible gains and speed, so just focus on the main team that you wanna build on, which is gonna be attack top row, defense middle row, and HP bottom row for almost every single unit in the game. And it's gonna be four pieces of either attack or four pieces of HP gear, and then two pieces of defense gear. Very rarely is it gonna be critical gear or critical damage gear at all. It's gonna be, most of the time, it's gonna be attack or HP. Before, should I save my gems right now are pull, Sekipoko. I am, I've heard that coin shot banners are here. I heard that it's good to save. I heard it's good to pull. I don't know which to do. Well, uh, the game's been out for a week and um, you know that if your account is having trouble progressing because you're out of stamina potions, do a multi. Get yourself some stamina potions. I mean, that sounds like a great choice to me. If you're having trouble grinding right now because you do not have the stamina to grind, you probably need to do a multi because you don't have any stamina potions. If you want to spend a couple bucks to get a stamina potion pack, do that. There's options that you do have, but really, you really just need to focus on those things because uh, if you don't if you're not farming you're not progressing pulling doesn't really improve your account farming does I have a lot of units built out right now and I'm not sure who to build out next who she, who do you recommend well I get a lot of people asking me hey I second here's my box and I need help with what to do next and it's probably one of the most common questions I get we actually just got it today multiple times from multiple individuals and I've only been streaming for 42 minutes. <laughs> so, um, just to that question effect, because that's extra meme worthy right now. Um, basically, what you should be focusing on characters that help you progress. If you're having trouble progressing in content and you need to have higher single target damage because you're having trouble with the story mode, you probably should focus on a single target character. But if you're having trouble with farming, you probably need to farm out the farming team a little better. If you're having farm with the raid demon, you need to farm out raid demon characters. And you know what, to that effect, I'm going to be going over those questions later in the video. So if you guys need best team for whatever, I'll help you out there. And I already went over best farming team, but the other best teams I will go over later to help you out. Check out what are passives and uniques and how do I get them? Passives and uniques are things that you get on your characters that are very, very cool. What they do is they actually improve your stats or they improve or decrease the enemy stats. They do something that's really, really nice for your team. And the way you get them is by achieving 16,000 combat class or combat power for each of your characters. You'll then have to go to your character window to complete a mission in order to unlock that and then do it. Let's go over to some of the characters that I have right now and show you the combat, uh, the unique ability for them. So if I select any one of my units on the field right now, let's go to Lizhawk, you'll notice that there will be a thing down here. This thing down here will tell me what the unique is. Her unique is Tavern Mascot. Increases all allies HP related stats by 10% in a battle except for PvP and Deathmatch. Well, since we're doing not something that's not PvP, you can see that I'm getting an extra 6,423 HP. If I also select Lissok as well, I can actually see that I'm getting 10% regeneration rate here, 10% recovery rate, and the big one, which is what really matters, 10% lifesteal. So those are the things that you actually gain because you have her passive. If I go to, say, Alioni, who does have a passive, Alioni's passive is gonna give uh, HP-related uh, characters or green characters the attack related stats so that's going to be for him i can't select it he's an enemy but it's attack critical damage pierce rate and uh crit chance if i go to my hauser hauser is actually going to have eight percent base stats to all humans you notice here that he actually gets an eight percent base stat boost as well as liz hawk's boost uh for ten percent hp related stats here and he's going to get extra defense as well as attack on his kit and you can see here i also have the hp related stats here now i'm going to go to weinhardt you may have been noticing at the top here, we've been seeing this 8% pierce rate. Now, Weinhardt's passive is going to be regeneration, uh, oh, sorry, Weinhardt's passive is going to give everybody pierce rate. Every time the turn ends, he's going to increase the pierce rate of all allies by 8% at the end of every turn, giving me more damage on my team, so everybody has more stuff. Now, the next obvious question that we're going to get asked is, hey, Sekka, do passives and uniques work from the back row? And the answer for this question is, well, sometimes. A passive like Weinhardt's passive, because it starts at the end of every turn, does not work at uh, work in the back row because he has a limit of five stacks. If we went to a passive, say like Hauser's passive, where it's a static passive of eight percent per um, for all human base stats, that would stack from the back line or the sub slot. If we go to a character like Lizhawk who does the same thing, yes, she would be the same. 
Alioni would also do the same with his attack related stats. A character like Gil Thunder, however, who has a where where's Gil Thunder's path? Nope. No, oh, here, here we go. Defense increase. This Gil Thunder on the field, this is an enemy Gil Thunder. This does not exist in the game, by the way. Increases defense by the 5% at the end of every turn. If this Gil Thunder was in the back row, he would not gain stacks at the end of every turn. He would actually only gain stacks once he enters the field. Finally, we got this Twiggo on the field. Yes, he would give all allies 10% HP. So I hope that answers your questions on passive and unique for characters in the front row and back row and how you acquire them. Next on the rocket docket, we got PvP. How important is PvP and how high should I go? PvP is not super important if you don't like free resources. So if you like free resources, lots of cosmetics on your characters, lots of free gems every week, that's, it's, I mean, no, no, that, that's not important. That's not what I care about as a gacha gamer at all. I don't like free gems or free stuff. That's that's not what I want. Well, the nice thing about PvP, though, is that for a lot of players, a lot of people do not want to get into PvP because they don't want to feel like they're losing to another player. They want to feel devalued or anything like that. What's really great about PvP in this game is the first bronze ranking PvP and silver ranking PvP, the majority of people are going to be fighting. 100% of people in bronze will be bots, and then 95, 99, 90 to 95% of the players are going to be fighting in silver are going to be bots, and, and then gold it starts like divvying up to more real players and then beyond that of course more real players so it gets you an opportunity to get into pvp and understand the mechanics that you would have to fight against other team compositions with so that's actually a very valuable thing that seven daily sins does so you actually feel like you're progressing just know that it is it's much more enjoyable than you think. It's not super unenjoyable. And you're not going to be fighting whales all the time at the lowest ranks. Don't feel like that's going to happen. It's it's much better than that. Uh, when you get to geared PvP, however, that's uh, that's a little different right now. Because everybody's in the low rank. And that's tricky. <laughs> How do I gain combat class and what is the most important? Well, combat class is a summation of all of your overall stats, giving you a overall power level. Combat class includes your health, your defense, your, your attack, and all of your substats in order to give you a certain amount of combat class or combat power. This combat class is going to be somewhat relevant because you're gonna to have to deal with it in PvP and PvE to have a certain amount so that you are able to start the content first. And if we're gonna be doing combat class, the most important thing to gain more combat class is going to be HP. HP gives you uh, the most amount of combat class, the second most will be attack, and the third most will be defense. 20% of your total health value is actually translated directly into your combat class. 100% of your attack is translated directly into your combat class. And I think, don't don't at me if I get this wrong, by the way, I think it's 80% of your defense. I have to find out. And um, that gets translated in. And the rest of your substats are then translated in at different values, but they're so minimal that they're really not gonna improve your substats by more than about a thousand total including all of them. So just know that that is probably not super great. Dub stats do not improve your, your combat class very great. That's not the big way to go. The only other thing that's gonna improve your combat class is your ultimate level. Your ultimate level is actually gonna be improving your combat class by 200 per ultimate level. That means that in maximum ultimate level, you are getting an extra 1000 combat class. So that's a big bump that you're gonna get uh, from that. You're also gonna get any combat class gains from cosmetics that you're going to be adding into your kit, etc. So those are all tangible gains that you can do to improve your combat class. When you're looking at a team as well, um, if you are looking at your total overall team combat class, that combat class can actually be improved by your support characters as well. And anything that they have on them for gear, for whatever, that's gonna be actually translated into your overall combat class, giving you a team combat class that is much higher. So if you wanted to gain more, you definitely need to improve your supports and your main team. Next on the Rocket Dugga, hey Sekka. What are these red quests? Why do I have so many? Okay, so red quests are repeatable quests that you can do to both improve the town level as well as get food and get uh, equipment or SSR equipment. So you can destroy that for gear stones or just get the ones you need for your account. They are all repeatable quests. So you make sure you do the red quest, you turn it in, and then it will give you another red quest. That's how you get more and more of them over time. Um, if you want to improve the level of the red quest, because they all start at easy, you're gonna have to increase the affection level of your town from uh, three into four, and that will get you normal quests. And once you go from four to five, you will actually unlock hard quests. And the hard quest is where you get the SSR equipment. Red quests are what you do in to improve your count on a day-to-day -day basis. 
How do I get these mother f SSR pendants and SR pendants? I need them. I want them. What do I do? Well, the only current way to farm SSR pendants and SR pendants is through the SP dungeon with your dungeon keys. That is why if you are trying to use your gold coins or your silver coins, it's really important that you only use these things for ability point potions and other things because you're gonna need other SR pendants for leveling up certain characters and you're gonna have to use your gold coins to do that. So it's a, it's kind of a, it's kind of a sh crappy thing. The only other way of getting SSR pendants and SR pendants is from events and Netbar will be really magnanimous. Um, I have a whole guide on SSR pendants and SR pendants. Uh, it's going to be linked in the description below. So if you do want to check that out, it's a full written guide explaining everything on SSR pendants, SR pendants, what you should focus on, what not to focus on, all that stuff. So you max min everything. So I hope that will help you a little bit more. Uh, I, a written guide of this is going to be more succinct and help you with everything versus me talking about it for 25 minutes. All right, guys, now we're in this portion of the video. So, Seka, what's the best PvP team? How can I build the best PvP team to smite my enemies and feel superior so that I am the number one champion of the world? Because that's all I care about. Best PvP team is a, right now is the team with the highest combat class. Your best PvP team doesn't really freaking matter. Whatever combat class you're at, that's the best. Uh, there are certain, certain team synergies that you can go. I actually have an entire PvP guide linked to that, of course, in the description below that's going to go over the best possible strategies for PvP, and it's going to go over the best possible ways to use your characters and food in PvP in order to get the best possible result. Um, right now, um, there are ultimate push strategies. There are... Um, a little there are tank strategies that though they are very very rare and not seen right now um, And then there are skill nuke strategies, which are very powerful. So um, mer Many players are going with just the highest combat class gonna win team right now because that's all they can do and trying to build out multiple teams doesn't make a ton of sense. I made it to Masters 5 with a farming team. So it is possible to do with a ton of different things. It's really on how you're gonna build out your team and whatever highest combat class is gonna do better uh, and how you're gonna be using your team. So most time in wins versus most dollar, dollar do spent. Worth to buy this character from the coin shop. I want Red Arthur, Red Hauser, Red blah 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 Let's go with no. I like no. No is a good answer. No, no, it is not worth it. No is the shortest version. Yeah, I like no. Uh, so the nice thing about the SR, the, all the units that are in this nice SR unit pool that you can just buy for gold coins is you get this thing every single week called a part one SSR ticket. And this part one SSR ticket is super nice because it gives you every single unit on that list plus a couple other ones. And it's super nice because getting every, one of, getting every single unit on that list sounds great in a ticket every single week. That, that sounds awesome. Should you spend your gold coin on that? Absolutely not. Um, I made it, I, I've actually made an entirely different guide on what to spend gold coins on, silver coins on, and friendship coins on in the shop. That's going to be linked in the description below for you guys later. So hope you guys enjoy. What's the best team for Red Demon? Well, the best team for Red Demon is going to be anything that does not use Blue King. Blue King worst raid unit 2020. Please don't use Blue King in raids, he's the worst. He is the absolute worst. Please don't bring him to any raid ever, unless you do not have the following. If you do not have Red Slater and DN, or Gustav, you can bring Blue King and I won't be mad at you guys. But if you do have one, all either of those combos, or either of those units, unit sets, then uh, don't bring Blue King to raids. Uh, the DPS unit you're going to want to bring is going to be Red Lizhawk for the best DPS unit. What re what's really interesting is the best DPS unit that you can bring right now that requires no resources whatsoever besides what you already have to do to complete story mode is uh, 65 Blue Meliodas. Yeah, just do that. Blue Meliodas, uh, big PP. So if you build out Blue Meliodas and use him in raids, he's definitely worth doing. Um, he'll do equivalent damage to Slater. We were doing Red Demons on Extreme yesterday, all just fine. And uh, yeah. Uh, Blue Meliodas does about the same damage as Slater. Build them out to the same level, same damage and everything, same same amount of weapons and cosmetics and stuff. Yeah, they do about the same damage. Uh, what's really nice about Blue Meliodas too is that um, if you use Blue Meliodas, the only thing he's requiring is a weakness attack to get his attack off. And his the fact that he only has one attack seal doesn't really affect you because on the first turn, if you're bringing, let's say, a Gil Thunder or something like that to boost damage and you're doing really good CC rotation, there's tons of other things that you could do to really just improve out all, all over. So I would say that, yeah, 
Yeah, that those are characters I would bring. Um, Guild Thunder is a great character you need to bring for um, for everybody for what's it called? For damage boosting, Arthur is also an okay unit to bring for damage boosting, but I would say Guild Thunder would be better here. Uh, Gustav, obviously for freezing, really, really good there. And then, uh, if you don't know about the Red Slater and Deanne composition, essentially it's it's two turns of lockout. You, you use Red Slater, it locks out every skill but attack skills, and Red Deanne, which is not the free-to-play one, it's the Matrona Deanne, it's pullable, uh, she will lock out attack skills for two turns and lower defense of the Red Demon boss. So this will give you the most amount of damage. Uh, what's really interesting is that we were able to do Extreme Red Demon in like probably three, four minute runs consistently um, with a team that did not have any Blue King and just a Red Slater and DN. Pretty consistent runs like all day yesterday. And it, it's not difficult to do with the Blue Meliodas and the other team having Slater or whatever with a Gil Thunder and a Red Lizhawk. You don't even need Blue King at all. Like a Gustav is great, but like don't bring Blue King. It just slows things down. This question I'm starting to get more and more today. Seka, what is the best team for Grey Demon? Well, <laughs> there there is a character that does really well on hard Grey Demon, and he he does really well because you can counter the boss once the boss lands with a full counter. But I, I forgot his name. I I completely forgot his name. Um, chat, can you help me out? What's his name? What what's the character's name that's really good for Grey Demon? Um, I forgot. The, the hard thing about Grady, I mean, is he's gonna be flying the entire team, so any character that uses a melee attack like Jericho is gonna be really bad for this, uh, unfortunately. And any character that is gonna be using, um, that's not a great green character is gonna be a hit a little bit harder. But what's really interesting on JP, the meta for Grady Min is Red Gother plus Green Skinny King plus uh, booster. So the booster could be Merlin for ult gauge, it could be Gil Thunder for attack boost, it could be Helbrin for attack skills boost, but that's the meta team, okay? Um, all those characters exist, exist in the game except Gother, so Gother might be coming soon. That'd be awesome. But for hard, you can actually just get away with using green, a green Meliodas. You only need one on the entire team. And the rest of the team, green Elizabeth would be really nice for healing for your team. Um, a red Elizabeth might be okay in the back line for your team. If you don't have green Elizabeth, you could use another character that has healing. Uh, you could use defensive characters just to like outlast the, the, the gray demon on hard and then use a full counter with one of your melees. You only need one green melee to beat this, by the way. You don't need like a lot. Um, the trick is though, you have to do it right as the gray demon lands and that's only time you can use a full counter but the rest of the time you're just bamming attack skills and trying to get the level three full counter level two full counter whatever you can get when the boss lands but i hope that guys help you out for gray demon essentially green characters right now are a little shy so uh building out a a perfect gray demon team might be a little tricky um i'm gonna try to be building those on stream later uh when it does go live so hopefully i'll be able to help you out there but uh as far as best green demon team it's gonna be a little tricky can I join your guild? You're so nice. And how do guilds work in guilds, 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 guilds? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, you can. Uh, so what we're going to be doing for guilds, if you're wondering, um, please go to my Discord, exclamation point Discord for all of you on Twitch. And then if you guys are on YouTube, it's going to be in the description below for my Discord. It will help you find any players that are looking to help you with demon raids, anything for guilds, all that stuff. And our guild name is going to be Waifu for Laifu. Because it's the best name ever. And then we've had the same guild name for like ever on JP. So um, the guild name's Waifu for Laifu. Anybody who wants to join can join. Feel free. Uh, we might even make a sister guild called Husbando for Laifu. But you know. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, we're just, we're just going to need enough people that's really going to you know, fill out the guild enough to do that. But we, we can do both. I mean, I'm okay with equality. I like it. Um, it's whatever you want. And... Basically, what we're going to be doing for everybody in um, in the guild, the requirements are pretty simple. We're going to be measuring everything based off effort. There's no combat class requirements. If people are logging in every day, there's a thing called guild boss lists that come later. If you're hitting the requirements, you get to stay. If you guys are nice and fun and you guys like bringing positivity to the environment and you guys are all cool people, you get to stay. If you're dicks, you get to stay. If you're always negative and you're always ripping on people and you're always doing the extra troll things, do you get to stay? Only if you're funny.
As a free-to-play or budget player, what do I overnight farm? And I have been asked this question so freaking often. It is actually surprising how question how um, often we get farm this. It's really interesting that people need to know about overnight farming, but um, what you need to farm all the time is if the, the thing that's going to be on half stamina right now today uh, is it's Monday, and uh, every single other Monday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday is going to be. Uh, half stamina raid boss slash pre-raid boss stages. These pre-raid boss stages are really good for chalices, good for awakening materials, as well as giving you gear stones. So you get all the big three. Those things are amazing to farm and really, really important to overnight farm slash farm forever into infinity because you get a lot of things out of them. Definitely overnight farm that on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, only on every other week when they're in half stamina. Next thing to overnight farm is going to be either equipment or food. And you only want to farm this on Thursdays and Fridays when it's going to be on half stamina every other week because that is going to be very, very valuable. Why food, you ask? Because food is exceptionally valuable. You don't realize how valuable food is until you don't have it. Right now, I'm kicking myself because I forgot to overnight farm food on one of the days throughout the week, and now I do not have any gold food to farm the thing I wanted to farm right now. If you do have gold food right now, I definitely recommend you using it on these pre-reboss stages because in Instead of getting 6,000 gold per uh, extreme run, you'd be getting 12,000 gold per run. That means if you did a 100 runs, that's probably, you know, what's 100 times 6,000? God, math has never been my strong suit. Oh, right, that's 600,000, right? Is that, is that, yeah, that's 600,000. So instead of 600,000 gold, you get 1.2 million gold on this, so that's great. If you did 1,000 runs because you're insane, that's, you know, 6 million instead of 12 million. You know, no big deal. No big deal doubling your gold value. It's just not a big deal to farm, overnight farm the food. Last thing about food is you do not want to farm food on the maximum difficulty. You want to farm food on the minimum difficulty. That means a four stamina food, which on half stamina will be, yep, you guessed it, two stamina. Food on two stamina. That's awesome. It only costs two stamina per run. It takes 45 seconds to run. That means every three, every three runs, you get a free run back. Wow. That's awesome. That sounds super great for budget players. That's awesome. Okay. The only other thing you can farm basically is going to be gear. And gear is going to be available on half stamina on, again, that Thursday, Friday. And you should be farming gear if you really, really need the gear stones. The only other thing, the only other way to get gear is going to be through the last two days, which are going to be on Saturday and Sunday, you have the availability to overnight farm chalices. And chalices are, no, sorry, not chalices, books. Books, anything from the SP dungeon is gonna be on half stamina. Books can be farmed there, and that is where you farm, you guessed it, that's where you farm gold. Since this Saturday and Sunday, you're gonna have half stamina, you're gonna be, which will happen every other week, if you're on the wrong week, sorry, it's next week. Um, you're gonna be far overnight farming the books on the highest difficulty stage you can farm, probably the max difficulty, only on the max difficulty if you can, and then you're gonna sell the books at your overnight farm. Last week was JP's Saturday night farm, and I ended up farming approximately 12 and a half million gold in books on a very inefficient farming team, just for uh, extra hearts and stuff. You can probably get as most as like 46 to 50 million every weekend if your team's fast enough. So just know that that's how, I'm, uh, that's how you get gold, yeah. So if you've been farming that other, the other stages and uh, you weren't listening, sorry, can't help you. But that's what you should be farming. Becca, do you know the Muffin Man? Yeah, he lives in Drury Lane. Fuck, don't you? Next on the rocket docket is, do I buy cosmetics? That's up to you and your wallet, bro. But uh, now if you look at any of the cosmetic packs, these are cost 40 bucks and you also get 50 gems out of them and the full cosmetic pack. Is that worth it? Uh, kind of. These cosmetic packs are actually really expensive, but the fact that you get a, a whole costume set out of it with this full UR gear is also really great. And this is actually a very, very good weapon early on. This is probably one of the strongest cosmetic sets that has ever come out to the game. A 10% pierce rate on a weapon is insanely high. So the Slater wet set is super, super good. I don't know why it's so powerful in comparison to a lot of the other cosmetics that come out. You can see this one here, it's got 3% pierce rate and 1% but you know, it's just the 10% the pierce rate on Slater's deck, even though he doesn't really scale off pierce rate is extremely high. So um, 
Some cosmetic sets are better than others. Now, to figure out if a good uh, cosmetic set is actually worth buying for your dollar dues is you want to really figure out if you need to buy them right now. So in the game, you'll notice that all the cosmetics in here don't have anything next to them. There's nothing, nothing special about them. Uh, in approximately seven days and eight hours, not 100% sure, but I'm like 80% sure. In seven days and eight hours, these cosmetics should, not sure, but should be coming to the gem shop. You should be able to buy each of the cosmetics here, and then instead of just saying, you will get these cosmetics for, you'll get these cosmetics to uh, improve your account, you can only get them when they say event. And right, I'll say it right where my marker is right here, you see it, there'll be an event thing right here. They will have the cosmetics only available for that event period for gems. Once they go away, those cosmetics will not come back for gems. They have not on Japan. They might on global. Don't know, but we'll see. Now, how many how many gems does it cost per cosmetic? Well, for every single cosmetic you buy, it is 30 gems, which is one multi. So you need to make sure that you would like to invest in those characters before you buy the cosmetics. On the Japanese version, I've bought a significant amount of cosmetics because at a certain point, um, I realized that pulling did really did not affect my account, did not improve my account. And what I needed to do, the most thing I needed to do was improve my cosmetics. But the thing I needed to do first is get the coin shop units. So I need to keep pulling once I got the coin shop units, then I really needed to focus on cosmetics cosmetics to improve my account even further. So yes, you should buy cosmetics and you should buy them when it's appropriate for your account as well as on the event. The other cosmetics that are in the shop right now, these ones will last forever. These ones you can get anytime you want. You do not have to buy them right away. They are available forever. Uh, some cosmetics, uh, the bond ones for 15, nope, the end of 30. Are the bond ones worth 15? <sighs> nope. <laughs> Big nope. So it's really funny, on the Japanese version, these cosmetics for Bon are actually worth 15 gold and not worth 30 gold, so interesting. <laughs> but uh, pretty much every cosmetic is gonna be worth uh, 30 gems, and the only ones that ever come out for less are these Bon ones that came out for 15 on Japan. But every other one is, uh, is 30. Uh, you're also going to need weapons, you're going to need to buy cosmetics here, and you're going to need to buy headpieces. Some characters actually do not have weapons, and they only have outfits and headpieces. And because they only have outfits and headpieces, they're going to be a little bit worse off. So uh, one of those characters, if I went to the Sacred Treasure Shop, and I want to say weapons, and I looked up, say, Red Grimor, Red Grimor does not have any weapons. If I go to his outfits here, he has outfits, and he has headpieces, but he has no weapons. Now, certain characters like Blue Bond uh, did not... Uh, Blue Bond, Red Bond, and Green Gacha Bond. Uh, those characters had all had no weapons on release for Japan and have slowly worked in getting weapons over time. So we know that Netmarble is really good about giving certain characters cosmetics over time, and you may get those cosmetics later. You may not get them now. So just know that uh, other characters that do not have cosmetics may get them later. All right, number 19, where do I get gear awakening crystals? Well, for all of you guys who are looking to get Gear Awakening Crystals, we're going to go ahead and go to Deanne. Now, Deanne's going to give us the option of destroying gear. Now, you can see all of you, if you're looking very close, I have increased the level of all of my gear to plus one. That is all SSR gear and SR gear to plus one. Rare gear, I CBA, dude. I seriously CBA. But we're going to go ahead and destroy all the gear here in order to give ourselves more Stone, uh, more gear crystals. They're gonna be the blue crystals. Let's see if we get lucky. Yay! I got eight. That's right, I got a full blue stone off of destroying those. Plus a couple extra stuff. Plus one your gear, bro. <laughs> Just saying. Hope you guys do that. Hope you guys do that. Because if you don't, um, you're wasting resources, and that's not a good thing. Oh, look, I super successed again, and I got another gold stone. That's awesome. That sounds so good. Oh, no, I'm out of box base. I'll buy more. Wow, I didn't get anything. Oh, well. Well, I better salvage the rest of these and try to get more red stones. Hey, another super success. That got me 
really good rewards. That's awesome. But let's do these gear right here and see if we get anything out of doing these. Well, I seem to be getting significantly less blue stones out of these gear. I seem to not be getting a ton. I get a little bit, but nowhere near is as much as I was doing for the plus one gear. The reason you plus one the gear to get your blue stones is because it increases the salvage super success chance. And that is definitely what you want. Right now we're just getting salvage successes and some salvage super successes. We're not getting any salvage ultra successes because we have a lot lower chance. We do get a salvage super success, but we get a lot less of them. Salvage super successes can happen per item that you're salvaging. The amount of items that you're salvaging doesn't really matter. Matter, but if you're actually getting a very much increased chance because of how um, how, the, how the level of the gear is. Should you go beyond plus one? No, it's not worth the resources. If you look at any gear to upgrade any gear piece in order to go to your gear set here, if I go here, if I was to upgrade this gear and enhance it, it costs 1,500 for any SSR piece, and I believe it's 1,000 for any SR piece. Now, that's the first level. After the, after the first level, it's now 3,000, and then six, uh, three, 4,500, and then 6,000, and then 7,500. So essentially, you get a gear piece to plus five. You will get more on the super success destroys, but it will cost you nearly 20,000 gold per piece versus 1,500. So is that worth it? Absolutely fucking lootly not. Do not plus five gear before salvaging. Even though you get a higher chance, it's not worth doing. Why, you ask? Well, the thing that's way more worth doing it for gold is gear gotcha summons. Gear gotcha summons will, yes, give you amazing stuff like, I don't know, anvils and SSR stones. You could actually even get the SSR stones right away. You can get lots of SR stones. You can get SSR gear. This is way more worth doing. And it gets you the super juicy thing if you need to reroll your subsets. Anvils. Anvils are the juicy, juicy thing that we even still need on Japan. We still need these. So guys, do not plus five your gear, only plus one it. It is way better for gold resources to do that, even though you could do the plus five. All right, guys. Well, my name's Seka Pogo. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you, Seka. You rock. I am now subscribed to your channel. Hashtag Bepo Squad. Well, thank you, random viewer. You're awesome. You click that button for me because you want to support. You want to also hit the like button? What? Like button too? Nani? Bruh, you're awesome. Thank you so much. You guys are fantastic. I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day, week, and all the fun things there. Have a great night, guys. Peace.